So in this case, we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to set that to uh, validate player. And I'm going to set this to my is player unit. And I created that uh, validator myself, so I'll show that to you here in just a second. All it really is, let's move on to validators over here. Of course, you can just do the drop down. We have is player unit. It's a player type validator. And basically, what it's doing is seeing if it's a compar comparison, seeing if they are equal to uh, user. Uh, that's the best I've found uh, to getting it working. Uh, it's not 100% perfect. It shows, still shows your ally or your hostiles. If you want it to show up all the time, not a huge deal. So what can you do with, uh, we're probably into uh, part three by now, so again, if you have not seen part one, two, uh, sorry, part four, god, I've lost track of parts. If you have not seen the previous parts, please do so. If you want more information about the map, please, please check the uh, newest posts or information on YouTube with uh, my Ion Cannon Wars maps. It should be coming soon, if it's not already up there. So anyway, back to what we're doing. So what can you do with this? Pretty simple. Uh, we have it all set. Not much else we need to do. We do need to uh, pretty much... Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, so what, what can you do with floating text? You can do all kinds of stuff with text, floating text, any kind of text you want. Uh, mess around with it. If you wanted to say what you're casting, if you want floating names above their heads, um, that's really easy to do. Just set it to an attachment point under, I believe it's host site. Yeah, just put the attachment point name here, and it'll actually attach the text to that attachment point. Very nice. You can't move the text around. I tried uh, when I first did this, and it didn't work. So if you want to attach it to a specific point for like a uh, name over the head of a hero or something, if you're doing like an RPG map or something like that, that's where you can set that up. So yeah, you could do this for damage. You can actually set things up for in the events that uh, you know the damage is, is, is done here to create the floating text, you know, uh, bounties, whatever. So you can do a lot of stuff with this. So we do need one more for our Vespine gas, gas uh, mine. So I'm going, I'm going to create a new one. And again, I'm just going to call it periodic floating text. That's number three, which is fine. And again, we want this to be text and not to do dad. Now we're actually going to copy this from our mineral mine one, so we don't have to do quite as much work. So once you get the first one in there, you can just do a simple copy from, and that'll make things a little easier for you. Suffix. Recipe mine. So now we have pretty much everything set up. We just need to change two things. Uh, I'm going to change this to SP. Plus four. SP. And we're going to change the color to a green light color. Go. And, uh, to do that a couple times, apply. There we are. It's a nice green. Pretty much the same stuff here. All we really need to change is our events. And what we need to change is the periodic minerals. Instead of minerals, uh, we want to do our gas event, whatever the gas event is that you're, you want to connect it to. So in this case, we want periodic gas. Same here. There we go. And that's pretty much it. No real change. Um, nothing else really to do with it. Everything else can stay the same. You just need to change those two things, and you'll be fine. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm wrong. <laughs> One more thing. You need to change the, uh, for each timer expired, you need to change the source name to the one we just did. So, otherwise it's going to call the wrong timer. Point. I almost forgot that. Oof, that would have been a disaster. <laughs> so just change all these. 
and I'm sure there's a better way to do it than the way I am now. I'm still just learning it myself, so I suggest everyone starts this way at least. One, because it's the only way I know how effectively right now, and it's, you know, pretty straightforward once you see it and understand how it works. Uh, you, of course, can mess around with it from there. Got a lot of them. It's a good thing to do in order to make it uh, look as smooth as possible. I mean, if you want to make it perfectly smooth, then do 0 0.1 on your timer and just move it 0 0.1 height every 0 0.1 millisecond, basically. You can, and that would look absolutely smooth. Um, but uh, it'll have a lot more than these unless you find a much better way to do it than I have. And by all means, if you figure that out and everything, please share it with us in the comments or, of course, in the uh, uh, tutorial forum post on S uh, StarCraft2Mapster.com. The link to that, of course, as well in the uh, video information, video uh, postings. And there we go. So that will do it. All done. Very cool. So let's go ahead and test it and uh, see how it runs. So we're going to fire up StarCraft 2 here. Take a good look at it. Take a second to load. There we go. So as you can see, here's my... Uh, ooh, that's loud. Didn't I, uh, hold on, guys. Just a second. I know you can't hear it, but I can, and it's kind of loud. So I'm just going to turn the uh, turn the music off for now. So you can actually see my command center is popping up. If you look around the map, it's Mineral Mine, Vespine Vine, and the other command centers over here. We don't see it. That's because of those uh, visibility options. As you can see, passive resources. I actually created a button for it. And as you can see, our resources and Vespine gas is going up five and two, about every two seconds. Very cool. So you can see it blinks as it comes out. Ignore everything else here. This is just part of the map. So let's go down um, to our Vespine Geyser down here. And let's take it over so we can actually see if our new Vespine periodic there is. So you actually see it is running. Again, we're not supposed to see this unless we're controlling it and, you know, or whatever. But you can see our floating text is working perfectly. It is the wrong color, uh, but that's easily fixed. So now you can see we've taken it over. Passive resources, made another button for it. Just has a simple behavior for the gas, and you can see our gas is now going up uh, six every two seconds because we're getting four from this Vespin geyser and getting two from our command center. No, it is supposed to be green. Um, as you can see here, our minerals thing has the proper floating text take it over and now we're getting plus 10 and plus 5 uh, minerals every two seconds so very cool so that's working great and if you go over here to the other command center we'll see that he also has his uh, label working just fine and there you go periodic resources uh, using those very simple and now we've actually actually added, added floating text using absolutely zero zero triggers very cool stuff I hope you guys have fun with it and uh, go through if you're never sure about something please check the t uh, videos again um, and of course if you have any questions please post them and of course if as I learn more and how to do stuff a little better validators things like that organization I will try to update this tutorial so that's all I have for you um, Thank you very much, and uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial.